Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Simplified Basic Concepts. Today in this video, I will be discussing about the Unorganized Workers Social Security Act 2008. See, before going into details, let's first brush up our idea a bit about the organized and unorganized sector. As the name suggests, organized sector is a sector where the terms and conditions of employment are regular and as per the rules and regulations passed by the government, as we have seen in the banking sector, in railways, etc. So going into details, let's first brush up our idea about the organized and unorganized sector. See, as the name suggests, organized sector is a sector where the terms and conditions of employment are regular and as per the rules and regulations passed by the government, right? As we have seen in the banking sector, in the railways, etc. So here the workers along with the regular monthly salary also gets other benefits like provident fund, paid leave, medical benefits, etc. The working hours here are fixed and if the employees are made to work for more than the fixed working hour, then they are paid overtime for it, right? So for everything, there are rules and regulations mentioned. The jobs here are secured as in employer cannot hire or fire an employee at his own will he always have to follow certain rules and regulations but all these things are lacking in the unorganized sector so an unorganized sector is basically small and scattered unit which are largely outside the control of government in sense of the rules and regulations for the employment right so the workers here only get daily wages there are no rules and regulations they do not get any other benefit apart from the wages and they are also made to work for more than 10 to 12 hours so there are no fixed working hours and even if they are made to work for longer hours they are not paid overtime for it right and as I said earlier, there are no fixed rules and regulations here. So here at times you can say that the employees are at the will of the employer, at the mercy of the employer. So the employer can anytime hire or fire the employee as per his will. Right. So these are the basic difference between organized and unorganized sector. In my previous videos, I have discussed about the labor welfares and the social securities which are provided to the laborers. Social security which is provided to the laborers and the welfare measures which are taken for the laborers, these all belong to the laborers of the organized sector. But for the laborers of unorganized sector, there was no such mentioned social security welfare measures. Right. Now, this act, the Unorganized Workers Social Security Act 2008, provides for the social security and welfare of the unorganized workers and for other matters connected therewith, right? So the basic difference which we saw between the unorganized and organized sector was apart from certain rules and regulations, they, the thing which they lacked was the employees of the unorganized sector were not provided with any social security and welfare measures. Now, this act aims for providing the same social security and welfare measures for the unorganized sector workers, right? Now, let's see certain definitions of this act. Employer here means a person or an association of person who have employed an unorganized worker directly or otherwise and pays him for it right identity card means a card document or a certificate issued to an unorganized worker by the district administration not at the premises of the employer or not at the workplace of the employer and he is paid for it right so what is a home-based worker that is he produces goods and services for the employer he is paid by the employer he can work at his own workplace or any workplace of his own choice but not at the workplace of the employer right so a self-employed worker is he is not employed by any employer he does not get remuneration from any employer but he engages himself or herself in own occupation which is from the unorganized sector and the earning which he should earn is notified by the central or the state government which is subject to sealing from time to time right and either holds his own cultivable land or does his own work for everything the state government and central government has notified certain amount which is subject to sealing okay now registered worker means an unorganized worker who is registered that is whose name is in the register of the workers under subsection 3 of section 10 okay 
so who is a wage worker wage worker is a person who is employed for remuneration in the unorganized sector he is directly employed by the worker or through contractors irrespective of place of the work right and he can be employed by one employer or by one or more employers he is paid the remuneration in cash or in kind so he can be either a home based worker or a temporary worker or a casual worker or a migrant worker who is employed by households including the domestic workers right and the monthly wage the amount which it should be paid is notified by the central government and state government that is the amount of his remuneration shouldn't be less than the amount which is notified by the central and state government okay what is an organized worker on a whole so organized worker on a whole we can say any home based worker or self employed worker or a wage worker who works in the unorganized sector and this unorganized worker also includes worker from the organized sector who is not covered by any of the acts which is mentioned in schedule 2 to this act right schedule 2 mentions the maternity benefit acts and other acts so if he is not included in any of this act and even if he is working in the organized sector he will be considered as an unorganized worker okay so any worker who is working in organized sector but is not getting any benefits which is mentioned in the acts of the schedule 2 then he will also be considered as an or unorganized worker okay now what is an unorganized sector it means an enterprise owned by an individuals or self employed workers and is engaged in production or sales of goods or providing services of any kind whatsoever and where the enterprise is employees workers which is less than number 10 So till here we are clear about what is organized sector what is unorganized sector what are the problems faced by the workers of the unorganized sector and what are the different terms which are been included in this act right so now what the government has done there are certain welfare measures and certain social security measures which the central and state government has taken and provides to the workers of the unorganized sector so there are lists of certain benefits and welfare measures which the central government provides and there are certain benefits and measures which the state government provides right so the central government formulates and notify welfare measures for unorganized workers on the matters relating to life and disability cover health and maternity benefits old age protection and any other benefits that's determined by the central government so these are the these are the welfare schemes that are formulated and notified by the central government now these are the welfare schemes that are formulated by the state government for the unorganized workers what are it on the welfare uh, schemes relating to provident fund employment injury benefit housing facilities education scheme for children skill upgradation of worker general assistance and old age homes right so we see here that there are different welfare schemes which the state government provides and formulates and there are different welfare schemes which are formulated by the state government okay now to provide the welfare schemes which the state government has to provide it has constituted a board and its name is national social security advisory board now its major work is to recommend the suitable welfare schemes for different sections of the unorganized sector workers right these are the various welfare schemes that are formulated and notified by the central government so to formulate and notify these welfare schemes the central government has made an advisory body and what is it called it is called as national social security advisory board right and its work is to recommend suitable welfare schemes for the unorganized sector worker and the term of the national board shall be 3 years and the national board shall meet at least thrice an year okay members of national social security board okay the chairperson will be the union minister for labor and employment ex officio member secretary will be the director general of labor welfare ex officio and 34 members are to be nominated by the central government right now ex officio is used to describe a position which someone automatically gains because of another job or position that he is already holding okay and the 34 members to be nominated by the central government out of whom seven will be the workers from the unorganized sector 
Seven will be the employers of the unorganized sector. Five members will be from the state government. Five members will be the, from the central government. Two members from the Lok Sabha. One from the Rajya Sabha. And seven of eminent persons from the civil society. Functions of the national board. We have seen that the major function of national board is to monitor and advise the social welfare schemes for the unorganized workers. Right. Uh, the functions are to review the progress and registration and issue of identity cards to the unorganized worker. Advise central government on administrative matters arising out of this act. Then third is to recommend central government suitable schemes for unorganized workers. Then it reviews the record keeping functions performed at the state level. I have already mentioned it monitors social welfare schemes for the unorganized workers which are provided by the central government, provided and formulated by the central government. It reviews the expenditure from the funds under various schemes and it undertakes the other functions assigned by the central government to it. So these are seven major functions of the national board. As discussed earlier, there are certain welfare measures formulated by the state government. These were the certain welfare measures that are formulated by the state government. Now, to formulate these welfare schemes for the unorganized workers, so thus every state government shall by notification constitutes a state board to be known as the name of the state, state social security board. So, if the state's name is Uttar Pradesh, so it will be the Uttar Pradesh State Social Security Board to exercise the powers conferred on and to perform the functions assigned to it under this act. So, what are the major functions we will be discussing later on, but one of the major function is to formulate the welfare measures which fall under the uh, premises of the states. Right. The term of the state board shall be three years and the state board shall meet at least once in a quarter. Now, constitution of the state social security board. State board shall consist of following members, namely the chairperson, minister of labor and employment of the concerned state, ex officio, member secretary from the principal secretary or secretary labor, ex officio, and 28 members to be nominated by the state government, out of whom 7 from the unorganized workers, 7 representing employers of the unorganized sector, Two members of legislative assembly of the concerned state, five members, five members from the eminent persons from civil society, and seven representing the state government from the departments concerned. Right. Now we'll see here the different functions of the state social security board. The first one is to recommend state government in formulating schemes for the unorganized sector workers, right? This is the primary function. It is to advise state government on administrative matters arising out of this act. To monitor social welfare schemes for unorganized workers. Then to review record keeping functions performed at district level. Review progress of registration and issue of cards to the unorganized sector workers. Then the next function of state social security board is reviews expenditures from the funds under various schemes. The last one is to undertake other functions assigned to it by the state government. So these were the various functions of the state social security board which are basically formulated to provide guidance to the state government in formulating and providing welfare measures to the unorganized sector workers. Now funding of the state government scheme. Any scheme notified by the state government may be wholly funded or partly funded by the state government or partly funded through contributions collected from the beneficiaries of the scheme or the employers. The state government can also seek financial assistance from the central government for the schemes formulated by it. And the central government may provide such financial assistance to the state government for the purpose of schemes for such period on certain terms and conditions. Right. Let's see what are the eligibility for registration and social security benefits. That is, what are the different criteria which are required to obtain the social security benefits which the government under this act will be providing to the unorganized workers. So the first eligibility criteria is that he or she shall have completed 14 years of age. And secondly, a self-declaration by the employee is required where he or she confirms that he is an unorganized worker. Then the eligible unorganized worker shall 
give an application to the district administration for registration right every unorganized worker shall be registered and he or she should have an identity card which is given by the district administration i have discussed about it earlier in the definitions now this identity card is basically a portable smart card which carries unique identification number right and if a scheme requires a registered unorganized worker to make a contribution then he or she can only avail those social security benefits when he or she makes the contribution and if there is a scheme which requires the central or state government to make the contribution then they will make the contribution here the employees that doesn't have to make the contribution so these are the basic eligibility criteria to avail the social security benefits which are provided to the employees under this act right it is social security schemes for the unorganized worker few of which i have mentioned here like national family benefit scheme pension to master crafts person jan shri bima yojana aam aadmi bima yojana etc right so with this i come to the end of this topics do like and subscribe my channel which is simplified basic concepts thank you